Hello, welcome to the football terrace. A little sneak peek of what the podcast set is going to look like. We're still working on some improvements technology-wise. Bear with us as we as we grow and get bigger and better. We're also going to start to do, and it's paying homage to how we started at the football terrace. This is how we used to do all of our preview shows um, for our games before, and we're, and we're bringing that back. We're going back to where we begun with car cams, but with, with better angles, better sound, uh, and hopefully uh, I've improved in terms of making the content as well. We're going to preview Manchester United's trip to Wolverhampton Wanderers, a game that I'm so excited about. As a Manchester United fan, I am absolutely... I'm buzzing. I'm absolutely buzzing about this game. I genuinely am, because... Look, there's a lot of conversation and talk about what Man United have gone and done in the in the opening game against Chelsea. And you and I, look, we all know. It was an amazing performance. It was an even better result. There are still areas to improve, but the times are encouraging. Jamie Carragher, no love loss when it comes to Man United himself, has come out and said that he doesn't think that Man United are that far behind Liverpool and Man City in terms of mounting a title challenge. I still think it's a couple of seasons until we're at a consistent level where we'll be able to challenge. But I certainly understand where Jamie Carragher is coming from. Now, the other aspect of this game that excites me is the acid test. And United have, have, of course, they've got their detractors. Everybody knows that Man United have got their detractors. The salt that's flying around, strangely as well from Liverpool fans. I mean, they're they're at the peak of their powers from over the last 30 years. They're European champions. They're favourites for the title, in my opinion. Second favourites to the bookies. They have an amazing manager, an amazing squad. But they can't stop talking about Manchester United. Every day, we're talking about Maguire, talking about AWB, talking about Ollie being sacked at Christmas. It's become almost like an obsession. An obsession. Now, I understand it from Liverpool fans who write about multiple clubs or work for either TV companies, radio stations, or, or YouTube YouTubers that cover multiple clubs. There is a necessity with it, in the definition of what they do that, that, that means they talk about other clubs. But I'm referring here to the, to the YouTubers and the content creators who are Liverpool only. These guys, these guys are talking about Manchester United day in, day out. The fear is real. The salt, I mean, honest to God, it's like being down in, at Brighton or at South End. You can smell that salt in the air. And they're worried. They're worried that Man United could genuinely, genuinely be on their way back. They really, really are. And I think they should be worried. I think they should be concerned. If Man United have turned this corner, the culture's fixed, the attitude's right, and in turn, the playing style is now on an upwards trajectory, of course they're gonna be fearful. Because United are sleeping giants. And if we wake up, if we, if we get back to the peak of our powers, we're going to put the willies up, people. It's as simple as that. We're going to scare people. There's absolutely no doubt about it whatsoever. So this comes at a really good time for Man United, a really tough challenge. Wolverhampton wonder, and the reason I say that is because, again, let's look at our rivals. Narratives and their rhetoric, their language. All I was told, all summer, all summer long, you're going to finish behind Wolves. You're going to finish behind Wolves. They're better than you, better managers than you, better players than you, better midfield than you. They even said we're going to finish behind Everton and Leicester, but we shall see. But to continually be told by your rivals that you're not as good as Wolves, to go away to Wolverhampton Wanderers, the second game of the season, for me, provides a brilliant opportunity. One, of course, and the most important thing, to pick up three points, to continue in this upwards trajectory. But bigger than that, better than that, 
it's about laughing at our rivals. <laughs> laughing at our rivals and saying, what now? They're so salty, they're so angry, they're so frustrated. And they shouldn't be. Because two sets of our rivals, two sets of individual fan groups that are Man United rivals, are Premier League and European champions. But they are so concerned about what we are doing. And it, look, it's a really good acid test as well. If you look at Chelsea at home and Wolverhampton Wanderers away last season, we yielded one point from those fixtures. To fast forward to this season, to pick up six or even four points from those two games with hopefully quality performances coming in both, that's progression. That is the upwards trajectory that I'm talking about. And let me put this out there now. Drawing away at Wolverhampton Wanderers with a decent performance isn't bad going. You will have, if that, hap- if that happens, you will have the rivals, uh, blah, 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 trying to throw nonsense at you. But remember, one thing, Wolverhampton Wanderers are legitimately a very good side, have a very good home record, and a very good record in general against the top six teams since being promoted back to the Premier League. Equally, these same rivals that will try to laugh at you, and this is what I'm saying, don't get triggered, don't get upset. These rivals that are going to laugh about it are the same people that said that United are going to finish behind Wolverhampton Wanderers in the league, making them hypocrites. And you know what they say about hypocrites and idiots? you just got to laugh at them. So don't let it wind you up if that happens. It's still a decent result. However, now let's move on to the game itself. I've got no fears. Genuinely speaking, I have absolutely no fears going to Molyneux. I respect them. They've got quality throughout, top to bottom, inside out. They've got quality everywhere. I respect them massively. However, there is zero fear factor. I am not scared of them, not with the way we're playing, not with the team we've got, not with the attitude, the ability, the commitment. However you want to look at it, I'm so impressed with this, with this Manchester United team, the ethos and the atmosphere that Oli has helped to to create, plus the quality and talent we have. I'm not fearful. United have got a huge opportunity to go there and pick up three points. I think they're going to go there and pick up three points. Two wins from two, six points on the board. And look, I'm really hoping for another little clean sheet as well. And dare I say a sneaky, a sneaky goal from Rashford to add to his tally for the season. Because that boy is scoring over 20 goals this year. And he is going to absolutely silence the naysayers again and again and again and again. He truly, truly is. But let's focus on Wolverhampton Wanderers for a moment here. They're a talented side cannot get away from that. Don't get it twisted. Don't get anything like that. They're a very, very good team. No doubt about it whatsoever. Ruben Neves, one of the best holding midfield players in the league. Jota. Uh, Jota was an interesting one last season because he took him a bit of time. He was a bit of a slow burner. I feel that way about Dan James in a Man United shirt. It's going to take a little bit of time for him to find his feet and Jota did that last year but towards the end of the campaign you know he's finding his level and his level is Premier League it's the elite defensively is where I think Man United can get at Wolves they've got a decent goalkeeper but when you look at that defensive line you know, Willy Bolly is good Cody is good that's an area that I think that Wolverhampton Wanderers who by the way are massively backed and they're going to continue to spend big big money going to be hard to take their players away from them because they have real ambition to become a Champions League team. Um, But defensively through the middle is an area that I think could be exploited as a weakness. I think if you go up against Willy Bolly and Cody and you try and play with a target man and outmuscle and outpower them, you've got a 50-50 chance of doing that. Where Man United will be able to pull them apart and where I think United can pick up that victory is in and around the the versatility of the front three. So if you go and look at the heat maps or the average position 
statistics of Martial and Rashford from the Chelsea game. You saw them both continually pulling out to that left-hand side, and that was because they were rotating positions. More rotation of that standard is going to be needed, pulling centre-backs out of position, pulling full-backs out of position, dragging midfielders deep. That's what Man United are going to have to do. I think the midfield of Wolverhampton Wanderers is solid. Their attacking line is dangerous, and our defence is going to have to be at its best. But defensively, through the centre, is where Manchester United are going to be able to, for me, yield a positive result. They just need to keep the energy levels high and the movement and the, the change of positions between attackers needs to be frequent. Every 10 to 15 minutes, have a bit of a rotation, have a little bit of a switch elsewhere, and it causes major, major problems. But let's not look past Wolves. I think we can beat them. They're a talented outfit, but Man United have got world-class talent throughout their squad and should be going there. And I spoke about this with Tottenham uh, the other night on the FT show. I spoke about it a number of times. It's patronising to tap Spurs on the head every time they have a tough game. It's, it's okay if you don't win. Nobody expects you to. Damn right expect them to with a squad worth over a billion pound. Man United squad, I don't think it's worth quite as much yet. But it's still worth more than Wolverhampton Wanderers. It's still better than Wolverhampton Wanderers. Now, you go away from home, you lose a little bit of an advantage because it's statistically football is proven season after season that going away from home generally speaking is tougher for a team than being than being at home so you lose a bit of that going away to Molyneux but United have got to go into these games and have the belief and the and, and the togetherness to, to know that they can beat these sides and that's the expectations that we should be setting as Man United fans and football fans in general but it doesn't mean it isn't a great result or a good result depending on the scoreline and performance so don't put don't, don't look past Wolves don't write them off that would be stupid but have the confidence that Man United can get the job done um, as and when they need to. Let's focus on the Man United team. The back line picks itself. Straight up, the back line's picking itself. Don't even try and debate anymore who's coming in and going out. That back five, including the goalkeeper, barring injury and rotation, that's it for the season. For the season, that is it. That's what's going to happen. End of discussion. This, there's not even a debate. We'll focus on a couple of them for a moment, though. Aaron Wan for Zaka. So much conversation. Is he the best right back in the league? Is he the best defensive right back? Overall right back? Blah, blah, blah. Great debate. I enjoy the conversation. But let's have it right. Let's have it right. Defensively, there isn't a better right back in the league. So the, the, the confidence I have down that right-hand side or the left-hand side of our attacking team now, the confidence I have that we can stop them is immense and AWB is only going to improve he's only, he's only going to get better and better and better the longer he plays in a Manchester United shirt I actually think that he has the ability to go on and not just be the best in the league I think he could become a better defender for Man United in the right back position than Gary Neville and Paul Parker they're the best two that we've had in the last 30 plus years in that position, in my view. Some of our older viewers that remember football before the early 1990s like me, due, due to the fact that I wasn't born. <laughs> like, they may have a difference of opinion. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section on that. But as I say, Aaron wan has the ability, the skill, the athleticism, the determination and passion to be the best right back Certainly in Premier League history for Manchester United, he's absolutely immense. He really, really is. Now, look, Maguire's had a lot of plaudits and a lot of people praising him and, and saying how great he, he was against Chelsea and what a colossus the man is. I just want to focus on Victor Lindelof for a moment because I think this attention on AWB and this attention on Maguire is amazing for him. He's no longer the £30 million centre-back. All of our defensive hopes are no longer pinned on him. He has quality, quality next to him, surrounded by brilliance at the back now. And I think he's going to, I think he's going to grow and develop leaps and bounds because of it. And as, impre as 
as impressed as I was with Maguire on Sunday, I was probably focusing on Maguire and his performance that little bit more. Lindelof impressed me massively. I think as the team moved on through that game, they grew, they, they learned to understand each other a bit more. And that's a dangerous aspect for our rivals and other Premier League outfits when it comes to our defensive back line. The more they play, the more they learn about each other. And look, you can train five days a week together, go out for dinner, bond, all of that's brilliant. But you, for me, you don't truly learn to play with one another until it's week in, week out. And the biggest, forget the, 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 the lack of ability or the injuries, the changing of styles and managers that United have suffered over the past six or so years. We haven't played with an established centre-back partnership or even an established back line since day dot. And what I mean, if you go back to the sort of 97 through to like 2003 era, if you then go from the 2006 through to the kind of 2013 era, barring barring right back in the the second of those eras where Raphael played a bit, Brown played a bit, uh, O'Shea a little bit, as a general rule, to this day you remember what the back line was. In the late 1990s, Neville, Stam, Jonsson, Irwin, in the, the next great era, Wed Brown played a part in that, Gary Neville played a part early on, but we had a good right back and then it was always Van der Sar in goal, of course, Rio, Vidic, Evra. United need to get back to that. And you almost want to be in a position, and I think we're nearly there now, where the conversation around who, who's going to play in the defensive positions, who's going to be picked, who's coming in, is going to become a non-debate. We can discuss their qualities and how they're doing, but it almost becomes a non-debate. And I think that's a real brilliant space to be in. Midfield also picks itself. Midfield also takes care of itself. Pogba on that right-hand side. I, I love the tactical change from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Again, this guy is debunking myths and debunking nonsense day in, day out, this guy. He's like a myth buster, straight up, because he's tactically naive, he doesn't understand football, blah, blah, blah. He switched Paul Pogba's position. All we've been told by the football hipsters and the wannabes is left-hand side of a midfield three, that's what Pogba needs. There's an article that Danny Higginbotham, Higginbotham sorry, uh, produced on Monday. Go and find it. Uh, on the internet, speaking about the, the role, the new role that Ollie has developed for Paul Pogba, a wonderful read, and how Danny Higginbottom thinks that it will yield great results, both when United are playing uh, against teams that open up an attack, and equally allowing more space for Paul Pogba's creativity when we're up against teams who are sitting back and being more defensive. Plus, Aaron wan defensive abilities help to mitigate and protect United against Paul Pogba's not inability or lack of the desire to get back and defend, but him being able to focus more on the creative side, which is what he is the, the best central midfielder in the world at doing, bar none. McTominay next to him, future captain of Man United. I believe this lad has got such... There's so much to come from him. There's something special about him. There's something magical wonderful and brilliant that that is for me teetering on coming out and I'm so excited and I'm so eager to watch so eager to watch the development now of Scott McTominay I really really am the attacking lineup the one debatable position is the right hand side and Pereira of course got his assist a lot of people are calling for Dan James to get the opportunity some screaming to give Mason Greenwood a start. It's a real conundrum. And that's the one position on my team that I'm going to leave up to you. Who would you pick? That's what I want to hear from on you. That right-hand side, Pereira, Greenwood, Dan James. Maybe you might even throw in a one matter. Let me know what you think. I, I'm really torn. I probably wouldn't go with Greenwood at 17 away at Molyneux in such an important game. Depending on how it's going, I'd bring him up. The same reason I wouldn't go for Dan James just yet either. I would look at, I would look at probably keeping Pereira in. He's more experienced at the elite level than the other two. And he did get that assist. And I think that 
merit is going to be very important to keeping this squad motivated and if you're scoring and creating and you're putting in good performances unless there is a tactical reason for there to be a change I, I don't necessarily think you should just be uh, dropped from the team or dropped from the squad the rest of the positions I'll explain why I would keep them the same I thought Lingard had a very good game against Chelsea you know run his socks off the energy the tenacity and there was real quality there as well and there have been a lot of question marks around Jesse over the summer, he did have a poor pre-season in my opinion, but he played yesterday, uh, Sunday, sorry, and he looked, he looked on point, you know, he looked on absolute point, I was so, so impressed with everything he was doing, I really, really was, so, you know, my hope is that we get a similar level of performance from him, he had a great opportunity last season at Molyneux to score, it didn't quite come off for him, so, you know, more of the same from that boy. Martial through the middle, AM9, my number nine, your number nine. I'm so happy for him. And it's gone kind of a little bit unnoticed because of all the all the kind of shenanigans after slapping Chelsea 4-0. But his celebration was brilliant. His celebration was him showing the crowd that he can smile, he can celebrate. And I think he has been listening. I think he's been listening to the feedback from fans, the media, and maybe, and definitely Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, definitely Solskjaer around showing everybody you love this club, putting in that work. And we saw that against Chelsea. He was phenomenal. Phenomenal. No doubt about it in my mind. Such a great performance. Such quality. So, so impressed with every little thing. With every little thing that he did. Getting his goal imperative. Takes that pressure away from him, gets that monkey off his back, can just focus now, can focus now on playing. And the other guy, my guy, my boy, the strongest player in the squad, and I'm not talking physically, I'm talking mentally, Marcus Rashford. The abuse this boy suffered at the hands of his own supporters, they don't deserve him. I almost don't want to see those, those muppets, those mugs, those fools, those cretins celebrate when Rashford does something brilliant because you don't deserve him. You don't deserve his skill, his brilliance, his talent, his goals, his dedication to this football club. You don't deserve it. You petulant fools. But he's on fire. He's going to score over 20 goals in all competitions this season. Everybody said I was crazy to suggest that last year. I'm not yielding from my opinion. I'm not changing my opinion. 170 odd goals during his apprenticeship as an elite level football player 47 goals 10 of them against top 6 opponents and he's now ready to crack on and he looks buzzing at the fact that he's not being told to just be a centre forward he can drop left he can drop right he can go through the middle he's given complete free range if you see an opportunity to shoot from deep shoot if you see an opportunity to, to, to pull out to a new position where you think there's space go do it it's not 100% a free role. There is still a team structure, but he's been given that autonomy and, and, and that, that element of trust by the manager to say, I know you were going to go and do the right thing. I know that you're doing it for the betterment of the team, so go and have it. And one other thing that Rashford's going to start to convert more of, he shots from distance and he's free kicks. Just give it another two or three months of him doing it. His technique is so clean, the way he hits the ball is so sweet. He's gonna start scoring them. They're gonna start to, one by one, they're gonna slowly start to fall in and you'll get to, you're gonna to get to the end of this season, right? And you're gonna go back and review um, how what happened in the season, how it panned out, etc., etc. And we're gonna review it. And we're gonna see all these goals. We're gonna see all these goals from Rashi. And there's gonna be 20 of them, 25 of them. And yeah, some are going to be one-on-ones. Some are going to be penalties. Some are going to be close-range tap-ins from crosses. But you're going to have five or six that are going to be absolutely majestic strikes or wonderful, wonderful goals from him. So I'm so excited about what this team holds, what this team can bring. Its overarching ability is another big factor. Its overarching ability it is brilliant. So yeah, as I say, I'm very excited about it. 
Can they go and beat Wolverhampton Wanderers this coming Monday night football? Yes. Without a shadow of a doubt, they can beat them. And I want them to as well. I've got this burning desire inside. One, forget rivalry for a minute. Forget what everybody else thinks and feels outside of the Man United sphere. I want to feel elation again. I want to feel hope again. I want to feel excitement at watching my team play football. And Man United fans, to the, to the enjoyment of rivals, have suffered. It has been a painstaking six or seven years. Barring, you know, winning the League Cup, FA Cup and Europa League were amazing. The comeback against PSG stands out. Beating Anfield at home, you know, with a brace from uh, Mata. There have been really good moments in that time, but we haven't had a prolonged period of four or five months where we've been really, really good. We haven't had five, six players in form at the same time. It's been painful. That is going to change. It is around the corner. So United fans, get excited. The future is bright. The future is young. The future is... The future is going to be exceedingly exciting for Manchester United. It it truly, truly is. And I can't wait. My score predictions for this game? 2-0 United. Another clean sheet. Improvements. Slicker, sharper defending. Another goal from Rashford. And I think Mr Pogba might step up as well, you know. Banging a goal celebrate with a nice dance and a smile, shut the media up once again, shut the rivals up once again. Yeah, I can't wait. Please leave us your comments below and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. And also a big shout out to our title sponsors, The Football Index. Please get their app downloaded. If you want to get involved in the football stock market, you can use our exclusive link that's inside the description below. Take care of yourselves. God bless and we'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.